Hi everybody, here's Christian from Team Workcast. And here's Conrad from Warsaw City Grid. And this is Metro and Team Workcast. These are again and still the Polish Nationals top 16. This is the final game or it could be the final game. This is a pros on the left, Mon have on the right, and behind the microphone we have Konrad. Hi, Konrad. Hey, hello. Thanks for having me here. Oh, it's such a great pleasure. And you were the judge for uh, for this tournament? Yeah, I was the judge and this is the final round. So at this point I'm completely relieved that the whole uh, tournament went uh, somewhat fine. So I'm just watching uh, that game from behind the uh, Marheva, so the guy on the uh, right uh, side. Yes, I mean, there's a huge bunch of people are, uh, gathered around this one table here. Uh, it was really, really exciting. So many people were like, like, you know, on the edge of their seats because this is going to be a really great match. Up on the left, we're going to see Noise. Uh, so he will mill a card from top of R&D every time they install a... Um, a virus, yeah. and Mar but Marheva is using a completely different identity that you wouldn't expect in a top game from a national event. This is a, um, huh? Cerebral Imagining. Cerebral CI, Cerebral yeah. Imagining, yeah. Uh, so a completely weird deck where his uh, hand size is equal to the number of credits he has. Yeah, and uh, as far as I know, Marheva uh, took this deck uh, from the uh, Netrunner DB uh, mm. ma made uh, some uh, changes, but uh, and he won uh, every uh, every every corp uh, game uh, uh, till uh, uh, leading up to those that final game except one in the first yeah. uh, in the first round. Oh no, sorry, I totally messed this up uh, because uh, it was about it was anecdote of he, about his runner deck. So uh, uh, yeah. don't mind me. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, both of these decks are like very combo -y decks. We already saw him in a previous game using the Chaos Theory Backbiter yeah. game. Yeah, so, I think. So the, his runner deck is like mostly the same to his cork deck. He yeah, that's the funny as, thing. Yeah, as much uh, creds uh, as uh, as much card as creds uh, in his pool. So. So, so it's really funny that both decks are kind of like, he's, have a, he's a running theme. So he starts with blue level credence, getting a bit of credits and a bit of card draw, and installs a card in front of each uh, R&D. And now uh, the pros uh, runs on uh, that HQ, and to see a card, uh, that is a shit from the sense, and it, that is nothing you can do about. Yeah, and, and I think this is probably uh, the mo the highest chance of getting an agenda in Srebla Imaging Hand, when he has only like... Uh, six hands because very soon there will be uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 cred creds in the corpse hand and running on uh, HQ seems so pointless against cerebral imagining. I don't know, there's like different theories about this. Like the, you have to consider that uh, if he's not scoring in agendas, then the agendas will pile up on HQ and uh, the chance to snag an agenda from HQ will just grow. Yeah, that's 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 true. But I mean, th it seems pointless because you are grabbing one card of like twenty. So it seems like what? Why am I even here? Uh, but you have to consider that there might be like five agendas on there, you know. Uh, so you, you still might get a good chance. But cer certainly better than on R and D, actually. So there is an install of the data sucker, and then Marheva just uh, keeps using the blue level clearance. Yeah, I, I think this kind of matchup is some kind of uh, uh, a run because or run or race. Race, yeah. race, race is is the word because uh, Marheva wants to have all his combo pieces uh, in his hand, but uh, uh, Pavel Pros playing noise has the ability to destroy uh, his combo pieces with uh, virus install. So he wants to install as much virus as he can to dis to disrupt the, the Marheva main strategy. That's that's absolutely possible, and we see Marheva even using the power shot, having the power shot on in hand. So, if uh, Pros uses something like a share Azade, he might be in, a, in a trouble here. Uh, Pros just runs on the R and D, uh, making Marheva spend that money because money is hand size here. So, if Marheva raises something. Uh, he uh, has a lower hand size, uh, so Pros bounces off this Mother Goddess and runs on HQ again. Picks one card, but it's still the Shippons and Sansen. Yeah, but uh, the point is the power shutdown is the element of the combo in this deck. So that's true. That's uh, as well. So spending uh, it uh, is not uh, always a good idea. That's absolutely true. You're right. Um, and uh, I guess we're not, not going to see uh, Marheva just using it uh, nilly dilly. Yeah, nilly willy. But good thing is uh, uh, Pros managed to snipe the first Jackson. Uh, mm. So uh, it's always good for the noise player to yeah, ha have Jackson. those uh, Jacksons away. 
That's true, the Jackson is part of the combo here. Uh, there is a Street Peddler by Pros installing three cards on the Street Peddler. Meanwhile, Marheva installs a card in his HQ, and then like an upgrade in his HQ. Yeah, and this is, I think, the signature. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, this is the signature up, uh, upgrade uh, in this deck. So it is a power a panic button. Panic button. That's great. And so it, it makes uh, like you don't want to run uh, on the HQ because it will only makes uh, Corp run more, uh, draw more cards, and uh, find his combo sooner. So it's hilarious. Love it. All right. So, uh, but he does. Pros does run on HQ, and now Marheva has to think about what he wants to res and use the panic button. He used the panic button! I mean, he reses the panic button. Now he has to think about where he wants to, or how many cards he wants to draw. One, One card. Oh, he can, oh, yeah, he can just keep drawing if he wants. Yeah, but uh, he has now, I think, Two. about seven or eight cards in his hand. So he wants to draw to some money cards to yeah. make uh, more money next turn so he can keep those cards in his hand. So he drew two cards and Pros has to read up the panic button <laughs> because it's also, again, the first time I saw this card in play ever. All right, so there's, he draws one card now. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten cards, I think. Ah, uh, power shot. Against this, this type of deck, I think Edward Kim uh, could see in his heyday. Like oh, that's true. Everything was is delicious uh, target for Kim. On the other hand, Pros could also just was well install an imp, and he would yeah. have like a very similar effect. Keeps running on HQ. He trashed that panic button, so the panic button no longer produces card draw. Yeah, and this uh, this uh, the type of uh, netrunner uh, game is like uh, pachinko. Like you just spend <laughs> click to and see what will drop from the HQ. <laughs> It's very much a slot machine here right now, indeed. You put in a credit, get something, put another credit, get something more. It's really just uh, the RNG at, at, at work here. Uh, and of course, Pros needs to uh, make sure that he doesn't like overexert himself. He does. His, he keeps up his board state. There is some important cards that he needs to get installed. You know, wild side, um, pawn shop, pancakes, all those things that he needs to install. Uh, so you know, keeping Pros busy uh, may not be the highest priority here. Alright, process this card two cards. No, Marheva, Marheva, Marheva. Um, I, yes, I'm sorry, Marheva. He has to discard two cards and uh, I guess he just got three credits. I, I guess Marheva didn't draw into uh, money ca cards. He, he, I saw him fist bump the table. Yeah, and, uh, pa and Pavel remembers to first install his cyber feeder and then use cyber feeder creds to install the virus, so it's even more efficient. Yeah, there's a there's a cache that was being installed to mill something. Run on HQ again. Getting all those data sucker tokens, man. Hmm. Nothing. One, two, three, four, f I think eight cards, cards currently in uh, Marheva hands. Some well, cards. maybe look, just looking at his uh, credit pool would be easier way to count. Uh, yeah, I guess. So he draws the um, um, card with green level clearance, looking for the cards in this combo. I mean, there's right now there's nothing Pros can do against this combo if it if it triggers. Um, there's like things that can, that uh, sh uh, manners can do. They can always install a virus mid combo, which mills another card front of R and D. So like having like. Uh, clone ship out is very important for pros. Yeah, and uh, I think he has uh, two pieces of uh, cloth uh, in his deck, so mm -hmm. drawing uh, for it would be also beneficial for him. That's true. So finally, restructure that Marheva was looking for. Still, his HQ way open. Yeah, because wonder... what, whatever, like at this point. <laughs> Uh, installing ice would only uh, slow him down, but now Pros has uh, both Lamprey and uh, Imp, so assault uh, on HQ is very uh, nice uh, now, possibility. Now you need to install that ice because now things are getting dangerous. So there's an Imp installed, and everything he accesses now he can just Imp away. Mm. 
All right, might have a Medusa Mandatory draw. And, oh, and, and this, I think oh, this, is, this is Cyberdex. I love this play so much. Oh, this is crazy good. And he will just raise it on, uh, I think, on approach. Or... Yeah, it makes sense to raise on approach so the, the imp can even be used. Oh man, exciting game. Man, this this is what what it all came down to. Can Noise win against the CI deck? It's certainly like an unusual matchup. Oh, I think that was a three pointer mill. Run on HQ. And yeah. I have a Rezzes. Yeah. I mean, thanks. Uh, he, he thinks uh, about it, man, uh, because does he want to lose three credits? Uh, to save one card, or he, he will uh, forfeit one card and then. Uh, I mean, he will lose the he, he will lose the credit anyway because of the lamprey. So oh, yeah. the lamprey. So I would probably res it. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, he yeah, res it. That seals the deal. Yeah, res it and trash it. The cyberdex purging the virus tokens mid run. Every, all of those virus tokens get removed. But since he, but still in excess, right? Yeah, and. No. Nothing. Yeah, but uh, but, yeah. but you are right. Uh, at 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 some point in the game, there will be enough agenda in uh, corpse hand, so uh, running on it uh, is still a good idea. Hmm. I mean, as as long as they're not not rezzing and just spending the economy cards, the agenda density will be will be the same as in R and D, just higher. Mm, yeah. Hmm. Process thinking a lot about this. Keeps drawing cards. Yeah, I think he has uh, both wild sight and pancakes in his hand, but he doesn't have cash and I think time to um, install that combo because he can't really slow down. Uh, he must have. Uh, oh man, uh, score! Oh, that's a good agenda here. Applause yeah. from the from the audience because it seems like so impro um, impossible. Yeah, efficient com efficient committee is one of the most important agenda for this combo deck because yes. it will make uh, so many clicks uh, possible. So that's now, the one that Mano, Mano, double biotic labor. So we are at in the free clicks land. Install four and clicks and then. Two clicks and and what have I like a uh, process like uh, can you like make sure you spend the right amount of money and that's a good idea because this is getting like a very com complicated play but yeah uh, he does the shipmanos and sand sand and then advances two additional times yeah so he spent ten credits mm -hmm. and it, it will only makes his hand four cards big so he he will discard so many cards from his hand. That's true, but on the other hand, I mean, he gets this very important combo piece, yeah. uh, this efficiency comment is so important for this, like, now, if he has, like, they're exactly the right cards on hand and stuff like that, he can just win the game outright. So, yeah, there's these cards going on. Okay, he has four cards. So now, suddenly, the agenda density on yeah. might be might be really high. But ma know. but maybe he did this because he knew he doesn't have many agenda in his hand. No, that's a weird weird custom. parasite. It's uh, parasite. Uh, yeah, uh, and then a parasite on the on the yeah and Marheva running there. And Marheva can't really uh, in, uh, Oops, rest didn't anything. want to rest it. Yeah, I think he flipped it over, but didn't rest it. And oh, look here, Marheva is also playing his R and D sideways. And here's free run on archives, and, and six that's points. winning on agendas. Oh man! So, I think this is the game that we can say that really uh, noise I didn't help uh, disrupt the, 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 that combo, and uh, the marvelous luck and persistence in digging in the HQ uh, brought yeah. uh, that efficient committee to cross hands. So.
I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna second guess about Heather, but like leaving his HQ so open feel felt really odd to me. I felt uh, somewhat sad uh, that uh, this uh, game ended that way because if Marheva won, we would uh, see another round from Pros uh, and Marheva, and this time Pros would play his signature Argus because we had Cerebla Imaging and Argus yeah. Security in uh, our uh, top uh, two players, so. I'm, I'm kind of dissatisfied that we uh, can't sell this. Yeah, we, yeah, did, we didn't sell this. We didn't sell. Yeah, that would be really great to see this. But we saw uh, Pros playing his um, signature Argus in the previous rounds in the third uh, oh, video yeah. from the series. So at least uh, you've seen uh, it, it play at least once. Sadly, this wasn't the finale, and this would have been a really great match up here, like his Argus against Marheva's Chaos series. That would have been really crazy. Well, so that was the final game of Polish Nationals. Cerebella Imaging uh, a, a, a secured second place. Noise is the king. Yes, indeed. Congratulations to both players. Congratulations, of course, to uh, Prost for winning the, the, the championship for becoming the Polish champion. Yeah. All right. Um, so generally, what were your impressions of, uh, of this of the tournament as a, as a judge, Konrad? Well, I was expecting much more problems with uh, timing windows, with people arguing about uh, like when to use cloth, what ha happened, who then. But um, there was no um, big arguments. Like everything went fine on this uh, level. I really doesn't didn't have to be a judge to judge something to give some judgment. So yeah, yeah. I was only there as a uh, Netrunner DB help and explaining the cards, and I think it was fine. That's really nice. That's really nice. And I would have to also mention that you know I think that the tournament was really well organized. It was a really great venue. Uh, it was really well coordinated everything, and uh, it was very very pleasant to play it. And I, we will we're generally very excited about being in Warsaw at this tournament, and I would I'm sure that we will return uh, next year for sure if there's another one of them. I think uh, the next uh, that big uh, tournament will be probably in February and March mm -hmm. in, in, in the same venue so feel invited. All right, sweet. And if you are living in somewhere near Warsaw or so, you should definitely check out those. And of course, you also have a t um, podcast going on, right? Yeah, we have a Polish speaking podcast uh, about uh, the runner, of course, uh, called uh, Warsaw City Grid. Uh, but we have also our YouTube channel when we g uh, give uh, English commentary to the games we record uh, at the Warsaw Meta at our weekly uh, league meetings. So. If you are interested how Netrunner is played around the world, this is the, this is the channel to see how it is played in Poland. All right, so check out uh, check out uh, those beautiful channels. I think it's a really great insight into like a meta that is kind of like unusual, where people are playing some weird decks. Yeah, this, this is the thing I like about Netrunner scene because there, there are so many people from so many different countries, and uh, sometimes the playstyle can differ so much, and it's mm. always fun to look like to, to to look up how people play in Sweden or how people play in Australia, how people play uh, in Europe or United States. So. So I'm very curious how people play Netrunner in Japan or China. Oh yes, definitely. All right. Uh, so, so Konrad, how do people say "hack the planet" in Poland? I know I'm not sure is this the version used in the hackers okay. in the original uh, translation of the movie, but I think we are free to say "hackować planet". Nice. Połączenie przerwane, a niech mnie. Um, there is one thing I wanted to address, which is something that we discussed later on in the car very vigorously. There was uh, one of the guys, uh, I think FOX was it, said that um, when the final card was mailed, and that was like an agenda, somebody gasped in the audience. Yes, and it was me. Oh no! <laughs> but uh, Pro, but uh, Pro said that he was so con concentrated that he uh, did, didn't hurt a thing for the whole game. He like he was in the other state of mind. In the, he was in the zone. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I yeah, I, I felt really bad that I gasped because like it was, oh my God, yeah. there's I a mean, way in the archives. I know, right? It's, it's, you're in internet, you're watching this game, so it's very easy to, to, to get carried away. So, so on the ne next nationals, on the Dutch nationals, we actually made sure that if the corporations players, that nobody can watch the cars of the corporations mm, players. Yeah, this is a good So they're setting, sitting against a war or something so that nobody creeps up on them. And actually on the previous nationals, on the, po on the German nationals, uh, Heinze, uh, requested that uh, specifically uh, so he wanted to be seated in such a way that nobody can watch uh, his cards and I think that's generally a great practice I wanted to use this space to share this uh, with other TOs so in the future if you are organizing a tournament and it's a high stakes tournament maybe that would be a good idea to set up the the seating so that accidents like this cannot happen yeah this, this is a problem because people are used to uh, crowding around the table but yeah. I, I don't think this is uh, good for players either like i think it's better for players to be relaxed and has breathing room around yeah. them and like okay guys we are in the 21st century there will be videos from those games so like netrunner as, spectac as spectacular sport is fine but during the live events i think it's not really good to have so many people around uh, the it's tables it's it's a bit difficult. On the other hand, like there is, I mean, you, you've you've been there, so you know yeah. how how the the you know the the atmosphere in this room. Like everybody's gathered around this one game, and everything everything came down to, came down to this game, and you're there, you know, you're live, you're watching it live. It's it's, it's I always find this uh, this atmosphere kind of intoxicating, and it, it would be sad to lose this somehow. So it would be nice to preserve this somehow, but may, just make sure that that's, uh, that there's no mistakes that can happen. In this yeah, room. or making like. Uh, make some like uh, big screen with uh, the streaming the uh, video feed from the table so people could uh, sit in more maybe comfortable positions and d don't uh, interfere with players yeah yeah something like this maybe uh, i mean it would be great because then you can stream it, uh, stream it to the internet or something and then of course it's not as much crowded and anymore because there's so many people crowded on those tables sometimes the people in the back don't see anything anymore so yeah, that that's something. Some things. So these are some things to think about in the future. This episode of Netrunner Timor Cast was created with a generous support from our listeners. If you enjoy the show and you can't get enough Netrunner videos, please check out our Patreon campaign at patreoncom hack the planet.